Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I wanted to take you guys through a full BWL run I just did with my new guild Sentinels and show you um, just some tips and tricks for each fight and also just give you a general commentary of where my head's at and how I'm thinking about going into specific fights during a regular BWL run. So guys, this is meant to be just each, I'm going to provide commentary on more than just each boss fight, but links for time descriptions for each boss fight will be below so you can skip to the boss fights you're more interested in this isn't going to be as in-depth as one of my videos to where i'm really looking at one boss fight long form i wanted to go ahead and before aq hits before aq hits show what was a really good run of bwl for me and just give quick tidbits on each fight so if that sounds interesting to you stick around that's what we're doing here uh, before we get started if you guys don't mind please keep the subscribes and likes coming it's very helpful as i build out this channel really really appreciate everyone doing that so if you don't mind before we get started and we give these tips please drop a like and subscribe that said let's get into it so running the green screen today um one thing that so a lot of people have been asking like about my ui and everything and how i get all this set up um in all my week orders it's really not that complicated my next video will be on how to do that and how to just what you need as a fury warrior to really arrange all of your stuff the right way so you can see what you need to see in order to do the most damage possible some people use i use lvy with um and i have it fade sometimes but you can use weak wars too but more on that later so what you'll see what I'm do i just did i just clicked off a few buffs so i clicked off my priest spirit buff i need to click off down around brilliance um just some other buffs that i really don't need that are really putting me towards buff cap. I have a buff cap tracker right here. I'm sitting at 25 out of 32. So I don't want, I may pull aggro on some mobs during this trash sequence before Razor Gore. And if you know you get too many hots put on you, you can start pushing off your dire mob buffs, your world buffs, because you get those first and those get pushed off first. Luckily, um, elemental stones have they got hot fixed a couple months back that those no longer take away from your crit cap or, or from your buff cap. So what you want to do is you really want to take a look and make sure that all the buffs that you have on are relevant. I looks like I'm missing down on brilliance, but and they just rebuff me with spirit. Let's see if I re-click them off. I don't see. I'm, this is go time. Like I get so dialed in uh, on a raid night. It's it's ridiculous. Um, I could probably do a little bit better of, of doing a check, but just a quick pause right here before we get started. You'll see all the buffs good to go. Um, I'm fully consumed. If you'll see here before raid, I go through my bags and I just make sure everything's neat, ready to go, um, and got everything going, going good. Um, so yeah, so we're ready to get started here. So I mean, quick story. This is a new guild for me. Um, Rip my previous guild. Just we had a lot of different players in the guild that wanted different things out of the game, and so everyone decided to go their separate directions. My new guild called Sentinels is pretty a little bit more advanced. Um, definitely. We don't have the attendance issues that I had in my last guild. So when you have 40 people who all show up ready to go, it's miles of difference to when you only have 30, 33. So this is actually my second, uh, my third BWL run with them. Um, they have two raid groups. I tried out the second raid group that runs on Saturdays. This one runs on Tuesdays and I'm going with them for the first time. Um, what I like to do here is this encounter before razor gore is like my favorite part of the instance just because you have all of your stuff fully buffed like ready to go and you can just do crazy crazy damage and these the way these ads come out they lend themselves to letting a fury warrior who's especially fully world buffed and consumed just do a dumb um an absolutely dumb amount of damage so um we all arrive we all go into corners i'm not going to commentate over this entire um scene however i will edit in the best parts of some of the uh combos that i get here because when you're when you have this many buffs and you've got two or three mobs in front of you and you're critting as much as you do you can do some pretty fun stuff with your rage and um yeah i'll show you right now We are going to do 
Okay, so that's the ad phase. Now Razor Gore is starting. Um, I used to go really hard on Razor Gore as I want as I tried to get my orange parse up. I got my orange parse, so now I don't take it as seriously. I know I made a Razor Gore guide that gives you tips to do more damage on Razor Gore, and those are all still valid. But now I'm mainly just trying to flex on Veil. I don't really care about Razor Gore anymore, so I really don't pop many cooldowns just because you never know how much time you're going to have before you do veil some guilds like if you're speed running this it's it's right there so if you use death wish on razor you're not going to have it for veil so um you know in razor is kind of a you know it's an okay fight but it's not i don't know not worth if you if you're unless you're specifically trying to get your razor core parse up i don't think it's worth really trying to go hard for when you're just so close to um to veil so razor gore spawns i'm gonna run in um i don't think i'm gonna pop many cooldowns i might pop death wish here but really it's just a chance to do your rotation bloodthirst whirlwind there's some nice tart ads sometimes you can cleave on so I'm, I'm actually queuing q you'll see my bars going green i'm killing q other than than heroic strike right now just because you can do some nice cleave um yeah and you know you just you don't need to pop wreck here you don't need to go too hard i don't even think i death wish yeah i don't death wish um and you just kind of crank him out of the park. We kill him real quick. If you'll see, just like look at the damage meter up here, guys. Like the discrepancy that if you're, how hard a Fury Warrior can go on this whole phase as opposed to like other classes, it's pretty crazy. Like I did 207k damage there. Closest person was 131. Some guilds, if you, everyone's really competitive, you're not going to be able to do that because everyone's going to be killing the ads super fast. In fact, my last run which happened yesterday we everyone killed the ads so fast i didn't even really do that much damage on that encounter but when you can if you go around the room looking to fuck shit up as a fury warrior fully buff you will indeed fuck shit up so now we're at veil um what you want to do before veil and i mentioned this in my veil guide go ahead and check that out if you haven't seen it it'll be much more advanced than this but you want to go ahead and take a baseline do you have all your cds still up do you still have all of your buffs ready to go? And when you need to switch trinkets before, uh, if you used, you should probably use Hodge on Razor Gore or DFT. Um, and you're going to want to switch to uh, Diamond Flash for Veil because Veil is going to be like a 40 second fight. You're going to want to pop Diamond Flash right before the fight starts so you don't have to waste a global on it. Um, so just knowing from, just going off of my kill times that I've researched before the fight, I need to diamond flask at 100 percent on veil i need to death wish at 24 percent and wreck and use a wreck at 14 um this is i went ahead and looked up this raid times kill times because i'm just an uber nerd like that but it really helps you um figure out when to use cooldowns especially if you're going to a new group that's probably a tip if you're joining a new guild and this is your first raid with them if you want to impress them as a warrior um, go ahead and look up their last week's kill times and then use those as your baseline for your own make sure you know what cooldowns you're going to use and also um, just get ready to go because this fight happens so quickly and you got to know what you're doing and get moving real quick all right so combat starts in 37 seconds what am i thinking right now i'm making sure that i'm in berserker stance i'm getting ready to pop my diamond flask that's my mouse wheel down for me is diamond flask and berserker stance and you're going to see me pop diamond flask about a second before the fight starts i'm going to use blood rage right before as well that's going to give me some rage i can battle shout so now i have battle shout out combat's going to start in six seconds five seconds four seconds you're going to see i diamond flask right about now there it is and boom veil starts um my so this tank cranks threat so i can pretty much go right in my my bar is going to turn blue when i'm queuing heroic strike and really all you start doing queuing heroic strikes on every single attack veils melting just make sure that you're doing your rotation 24 percent i need a death wish i death wish you keep the heroic strikes queued keep the bloodthirst going i'm not even close on threat we're going to be popping wreck here soon now we're moving to execute phase execute uh, heroic strike execute heroic strike rex pop now and you just go absolutely hard now um i could be bloodthirsting as well but you just keep going hard you'll see i'm keeping the uh, heroic strikes queued as you can and look at that damage guys just keep it coming keep it coming i get amped just watching this stuff uh, you'll see i've got perfect cooldown usage pretty much and i can rank one more execute for 1.8k damage right there 1.7 adjusted so that's pretty cool um 
that fight happens real quick basically the main things you need to do during that fight are heroic strike on every single attack as much as you can because you'll be able to do it even in the execute phase when you get to execute phase um one thing that i've had trouble with recently has been weaving recklessness and death wish popping successfully when you're trying to use every single gcd successfully sometimes you'll hit it and it won't go off because your their gcd is not up so you really need to commit to hitting those and then um you know i get a lot of comments saying that you should be bloodthirsting um when you're above 2k ap and you should be bloodthirsting when you're above 2k ap the thing is i wish i had more chance to get more reps in in these boss fights in classic more than just once a week i wish it was like retail to where you could go in and do these things on like multiple different difficulties so you could just really get used to playing in a raid environment i'm personally just not that good at queuing in bloodthirst in my execute rotation because i find that um it throws me off and i don't get as much damage in when i try it even though theoretically i should be able to i need to practice it more it's something i'm going to work on but also it's also not a huge damage increase from just execute spamming it's very minor um so is it worth it for you if unless you're very comfortable doing it then to just do something that's super easy and just spam execute i don't know um that's you know remains that that's up to you but if in theory you can do more damage go ahead and start working that in it's definitely something that i plan on improving on but you're not going to do a ton of less damage if you're just execute if just using execute and if you're better at just using execute you're going to be better off just doing that than trying to bloodthirst and stuff and messing up your gcd usage and you know screwing up that phase um, but just know that in an ideal world you can um you can do that so we're just killing the trash i'm going to skip through the trash i'm going to skip through um so now we're at the suppression room. Suppression room, I mean, this guild does the suppression room pretty interesting. We kill the uh, Death Talon Hatchers individually up here, and they gather the whelps, and then they kill all the whelps at once before we move all the way to the end of the room so that we don't get any um, respawns. I think it's really cool. Like I mentioned in my Broodlord video, when you're in at this point through the suppression room and you pause right before Broodlord, you really need to do a quick take stock of your buffs and everything and make sure that you have everything like you'll see here i realize i don't have fire water on and i go ahead and apply my fire water right before we move in um what and i also switched to my diamond flask too in time um that was something that i realized as we ran up here oh shit i've hodge and luckily i we took a time to drink right here so i was able to get diamond flask back up um i'll link this add-on it helps you keep it's called trinket menu it helps keep track of which trinkets you have and you can easily switch them and you can even queue them up to switch that's something you can do in Neff on, on the nefarian fight so as soon as you're out of combat it'll switch your trinket which is pretty dope um so yeah so going into broodlord um one thing i'm going to be a little bit careful with on this guild is i don't know how well these tanks do on threats so as we know from my broodlord video uh broodlord's a very hard threat check with the tanks but so far i've been very impressed by the tanks, so i go pretty hard actually um you know doing some pretty big damage into into broodlord but keeping but keeping a very close eye on threat seeing that i'm fourth um moving up into third and getting kind of high um so you know i probably should relax a little bit but the off tank is doing a good job of beating me so i go ahead and i keep doing a good amount of damage this year i'm holding bloodthirst a little bit as i try to let the other warriors um, catch up i'm pretty close on threat so that's something that i want to watch out for and you'll see here i sapper i um, got diamond flask up death wish up and i'm just i'm doing a boatload of damage to this guy one what happens here is i get extremely lucky because i actually think i'm playing at a thousand iq i see myself right now he right at 20 percent right as xq's phase hit gets hit tank gets threat his threat cut and i go into xq phase and what happens what i think i'm about to do is I think that I use a lip right here but in my haste to do this I didn't get my lock cookie usually I replace my mouse 3 with a lock cookie because the mouse 3 is my, uh, my middle mouse button is my potion and I usually have a lock cookie there in raids and what happens is I think that right here I am going to lit because there's probably about six seconds before this guy dies. I'm about to go into execute phase. I'm doing so much damage. I've just committed to this fight. I think that I'm going to lit and I use a po you'll see me use a potion right here. When I see as I see I get aggro. I think that I lit right here and I think I'm playing at a million IQ, but my dumbass actually just used a regular health potion right there. So I survived this just because my new guild has God, God tier healers. 
look at all of them they immediately gets called out immediately in discord that they need to switch to me and then they just keep me up i thought that i got through that with a lip at the time but then i looked back through the logs and it saw that i used a uh um, a health potion because he should have gone back to the tank if i lipped but he didn't so that's something that um i tried to be high iq I, I ended up kind of scuffing that but i got saved so and i didn't get any buffs pushed off either um with the healers so you know mad shout out to this new my new guild um very organized we're clearing through the whelps clearing through the trash um getting ready for fire maw what you can do is when you know fire maw is the next pull you could use a fire juju you could use a greater fire resist pot to help your healers and you can this is when you want to equip your fire resist set so i only have one piece of my fire resist set but if you have more this is when you put them all on because if you the more fire resist you have the more of the stacks you're going to drop and uh of, of the debuff he puts on you so you know how this fight works you have to run out once you have a certain amount of stacks or he's just going to burn you to death essentially if you have high fire resist you're going to resist um those stacks so you might just stay at three or two or three or you build them very sl much very slowly so that you can stay in and do more damage to the boss i don't have a lot of fire resist so i substitute a little bit of that by using two greater fire resist potions in this fight so i pop one in the beginning and then i'm going to use the other one like a mighty rage pot I'm going to pop it right before the execute phase, then stay in a little bit longer. I also get a lock cookie now, finally. So you'll see that um, uh, I, I pop that as well during the execute phase because I'm taking a good amount of damage with all the fire resist stacks and um, and I, I just use it. So you only use all of your resources. You can even, even more than that, have whipper root tubers too and be able to pop those. So I have those, but I'm just not, I don't use them enough. So now what you're doing here they've told us that they're pulling fire maw moving things along pretty quickly i uh i use blood rage and i'm gonna get a i apply my battle shout we run in we um go over here and we go ahead and call the melee in we run back there and really you just kind of start your rotation uh one thing you want to do look at your boss look at your guild's kill times if you take like four minutes to kill fire maw you can pop death wish right at the stop here because it'll be up for execute this guild kills it too fast so i don't use death wish at the start you're really just doing your rotation I just scuffed my rotation right there and left Bloodthirst on, on, on Whirlwind on cooldown for too long. But you'll see that I get to around five to six stacks and I run out. You can push that a little bit higher, to be honest. But this is a new guild. I'm not trying to be a dick and die. So um, I get lucky right there and run back in before there's another stack. But you really want to run out around five to seven. This really just depends on your guild. Some, some, you know, I'm sure there's some guilds out there that just say, stay in and, and do whatever you want because we kill the boss in 15 seconds. But for all the normie guilds out there, you, you don't want to put too much uh, crap on your healers. But you'll see that, you know, you can do a good amount of damage on this fight, guys, especially when you've got still Songflower and everything. So, you know, you do want to run out. You want to bandage too as much as you can just to help your healers out. My healers aren't having any issues. So as we go into 36%, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my um, greater fire resistance pot right now. I pop that. I run in and I treat this like an execute phase. I death wish. I know that there's about 30 seconds left in the fight. And you just I'm just kind of com I'm committed at this point. You'll see I start working my way up the damage meter. I sapper. I don't even know if sappers work on this guy. I just do it anyway. And now we're queuing into our execute phase. Um, execute, execute, execute. No mighty rage pot for me because of what I use the greater fire resist pot. I just, I'm now top damage and I'm just going to stay in here and execute. My stacks are getting kind of high, so that's, you know, worrying. I go ahead and use my lock cookie right there. And he's dead. I, I went to nine stacks and was able to top DPS by staying in. So that, you know, could be a way for you to do fire maw if you don't have a full fire resist set go ahead and use great use two greater fires as potions and pop the second one before execute phase so you can stay in a bit longer have a health cookie have a whipper root tuber there available so that you can get those things um use those things as you to increase the time you stay in for the execute phase without dying so yeah this is going to be a hard fight for me to get my last parse on just because people are starting to, you'll, you'll notice now <clears throat> people are starting to do more and more damage on these fights that doing like a thousand damage on broodlord i don't even think is an orange parse anymore just because people are more coordinated now they're fully decked out in in phase whatever this phase is, is gear and 
the standards of what is a true parse is going to is is now way higher so when you go into aq in a couple weeks or a month for whatever the time is for you, for your server the the more you can come in prepared and ready to go from the start the easier it's going to be to parse because it gets harder to parse as time goes on because more just how parses work it's a percentile based thing you it's you relative to everyone else people get better get more gear do more damage over time and so um, it's easier to parse in something like aq on weeks one through like six as it is on weeks like you know six to 20 however long however however the hell long we're going to be in aq for probably a long time but i'm excited for it so that's fire mall some more trash 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 this is the fun part of the instance just lots of trash all right so we've cleared all the trash now we're getting ready to do ebon rock and flame gore so here's the deal with ebon rock and flame gore you need to prioritize your cooldown usage between these two fights as you'll see both the dragons are out there chilling ready for us to go they're back to back you death wish on one you're probably not going to have it up at the right time for the next one and if you use wreck on one you know you're for sure not going to have it up same with diamond flask you got to choose which one you're going to do i decided i'm going to go hard on ebon rock so I've, i put diamond flask on i'm going to death wish on ebon rock at the at the ideal time and i might pop a wreck too i don't remember if i do or not this is another good time as you're looking at these guys to go ahead and take a take stock of your buffs go ahead and look through your inventory figure out what you need to do um, also as ebon rock gets pulled be very careful guys don't do anything that's going to generate any amount of threat because this is a very crazy time where the tank needs to go up and get him and bring him back and look he's not attacking him he's relying on just like whatever the hell he just shot him with so if you like battle shout at the wrong time right there you can pull aggro and die so we run in i'm gonna sunder first gcd there it is and now boom we move into uh regular rotation from my cooldown times i need to uh diamond flask at 95 percent, which i've already done death wish at around 50 to 45 percent, and use wreck at 26 percent. so we just absolutely tear into him um if you watch my ever rock guide i go into a little bit more detail as to like what you can do if you're having threat issues but we're not really having threat issues um with this guild except if you look at the threat meter it is pretty pretty goddamn close between the warriors um but the tanks are starting to pull ahead now um you know one of the things you need to do is look your cooldowns up before time so you know that you can death wish as early as 50 percent. like look how much damage i'm doing just because i know that i've was able to have all these cooldowns up um, I think I might wreck on this fight too. I'm going to use wreck at 26% around there. I think I even go a little bit earlier. I could have applied battle shout too. We'll know that. I think, do I wreck? I don't think I wreck. No, there's no way. I think I save wreck for the next fight. But, you know, not a lot going on with these, these two fights, to be honest. I think that they are pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward if your tanks are on the ball. If your tanks aren't on the ball, these fights can be an absolute shit show. So, now, what happens is, as soon as you kill him, now it's time to go kill Flamegore. Flamegore has less HP. There's going to be a faster kill. And what, the, what you're going to want to do as well is, we just use Diamond Flask. It's going to be six minutes till we have that up. We're not going to be able to use it again, so we need to make sure we're switching back to Hodge. Also, um, you need to keep an eye on your diamond, uh, your death wish cooldown, because from my notes, from my note card, I would death wish at 53% for Flame Gore. And I've been in instances where I won't have death wish up until the last 20%. So you need to know as soon as it's coming off cooldown so you can pop it. Even if it's not at the ideal, pop it as soon as possible because it'll definitely be up by the time you're ready to use it on Chromag. Okay, so here we go. Flame Gore is coming down. So like I said with Flame Gore, faster fight. Go ahead, charge in. Um, Sunder first GCD. And then go ahead and get your stuff going. This is a, just a as much as you can do to battle to Bloodthirst and Whirlwind on cooldown. Never let them all cool down. Look how hard Bloodthirst hits. It's absolutely disgusting. Um, make sure that when you're queuing in heroic strikes, only do them when you know you're not going to scuff your rotation. Don't try and do so many heroic strikes that you start messing up when you can use Bloodthirst and Whirlwind. That's a big no-no and something that new warriors do a lot. So go ahead and um, you know first cooldown usage should be around now with death wish you'll see that i don't have death wish up yet it's coming off and i should pop it immediately as soon as it's up there you go i do it um and we're going to use a racket around probably 30 percent 
So what you there's wreck. Now we've we need to get the most value. Ooh, ooh, two dodges in a row. That's disgusting. Um, so now we're getting the full XQ phase in. We can my rage pop. Ooh, we crank a 4.4k right in there. I pull. I almost pull threat for a second. Look at those fat. Oh, I love wreck so much. God, gotta love wreck. Do I get one more in? I don't. But really good damage. 916 DPS there. Um, you know, like I said before that fight, death wish supposed to death wish at like 56 percent. It was still on cooldown at 50%. It didn't come off cooldown until like 48%. So pretty important that you have the wherewithal to know and have something on your screen showing you, in, whether it's a weak aura or something like I've done with LVI's bars to show you that Death Wish is now off cooldown in one second. So you can pop it and go ahead and um, even though you're not using it at the ideal time, you're still using it when you need to be. Um, one quick thing on this trash before Chromag, it's, you gotta be careful guys, because your tanks will start spinning. And if your tank is dual wheel tanking, or they have like a two hander out, they can be very, very deadly. You'll see that my thunder, look at the thunder fury over there spinning on skull. I'm not even going to go over there. I'm just going to use, I'm going to be a ranged warrior. They can be very deadly. You really want to look out like the tank to the right spinning. So as soon as they say like, I'm spinning or something like that, you got you really got to be careful. Let's go ahead and skip to Chromag. All right. So Chromag, depending on oh we're going up into Chromag's room. So Chromag, depending on how sweaty how elite your guild is, is either going to be a fight to where you can use Death Wish twice or a de only use Death Wish once. During BWL progression with my previous guild. We killed Chromag in like four to five minutes. And that meant that you could death wish right at the beginning and have death wish up during the execute phase. So you could get two death wishes in. You can do that. Some guilds, you can do that on a lot of fights. You need to look at your Warcraft logs and figure out how long your fight is. So what you want to do on Chromag, a couple things are you definitely want to run out. You want to, I keep my inventory open so that I can right click my sand. Because if you get bronze affliction, you're going to want to cleanse that, cleanse that off yourself as soon as possible. Because if you get, if you keep getting slowed or they pause you in time, that will really scuff your DPS, even get you killed if you eat the wrong uh, debuff. So, you know, you want to run out with the guild. Don't get too greedy here. Um, you can dip behind the structure, but I, this guild is just saying to run back to the healers. And honestly, that's just the easiest thing to do. Think of your healers, guys. Think of the healers. Um, so you're going to run in. Um, we're not going to death wish at the beginning of this fight because Chromag is going to die too quickly for that. We go ahead and we run up and you just want to essentially really make sure that you get in a good position that's slightly behind him. Don't attack too close to the side. You want to get that behind bonus and you know the regular rotation everyone one thing that um we have here is that we have a guildy who calls out when um it's what if what afflictions going on so if he's got fire weakness if you rip a sapper during that you can do like a three to four k sapper on him so that's like a big dps increase so you want to wait for fire and vulnerability to use that um one thing that you can do is you run in and out between his breaths is you can keep your attacks going and facing him and you might be able to get a, another heroic strike off as you run an attack from the side so strafe when you run out see how i'm doing that i'm strafing i'm getting like one more attack in i'm getting one more heroic strike on at the end of my swing timer and then i am letting um everyone else we're running back in don't just run back um and waste opportunities to attack get as many attacks as you can and possible so, I mean, this is just, you know, Charmac's chunky. You have a lot of time to really rip into him as you go between regular phase and XQ phase. Um, so, yeah, just make sure you're running out. Frostburn. I mean, Chromag's whatever. This guy just drops the loot that you want. So, like, that's why he's a cool fight. Let's see here. I don't think I've sappered yet. I haven't seen fire vulnerability called. His vulnerability is shadow right now. So, if you're a shadow priest, you could rip. I don't think we have one in the guild. Oh, the, war, the Warlocks are popping off. It's been Shadow for a while now. Um, it's Frost now. Time for the Mages to uh, catch up. So you'll see there, I, have, I too also got a couple extra attacks in. Now, you know, when we run in this time, we're close to execute phase. We probably want a Death Wish right here. 
So we go ahead and we, as soon as he says phase two, you're going to want a death wish, which I do. A sapper because it went to fire vulnerability. And we start just moving into big D numbers. And you can use your mighty rage pot here. And we're going to kill him before he even has a chance to do another breath, I'm pretty sure. I think we might run out just to be careful. Yeah, I think we do. Um, but we could have stayed in. But I'm just trying to be careful. It's a new guild. You're not trying to be Rambo. Do we get CTS? Do we get boots? Of course not. Top dragon hide gloves and empowered leggings. I guess those are good for our clothies of the world. But not what we want from that boss. I guess that's one thing I haven't really discussed a lot is loot from these bosses. I think what the problem was with BWL and, and Molten Core is that there's like three to four things in each raid that we really want the others are kind of nice to have whereas a lot of other classes have either tier or bis pieces from almost every single boss also our loot's on such low drop percent chances that you don't see it that often whereas if your bis piece is your tier chest i mean you have a good chance of seeing that every other week so AQ is going to be exciting because almost every single boss is dropping something that we want as Fury Warriors, so that's really cool. And they're actually substantial upgrades from things we've had for a while now. How do we approach Nefarion? So a couple things about this fight. First off, you're going, it's going, you're going to have enough time between uh, Nefarion starting and him actually flying to the ground and gunning towards XQ phase with 30 seconds left in the fight. You can use Deathwish twice on this fight. So pop it at the beginning of the fight when you're flexing on the ads just to do more damage then use it again during an execute phase to rip good numbers into nefarium now you're going to want to put your anixia click on of course because uh nefarium will just absolutely murder you if you don't have that on believe me i've done this um so you're going to want to keep that on but you'll see i'm able to do this in this video there's a moment, a brief moment between him landing and phase one ending to where you can re-put, after he does his breath, where you can put your DPS cloak back on. You can also switch trinkets. So if your guild kills Nefarian fast enough, it's actually better to use Diamond Flask on that fight than Hodge or another trinket. So you can switch, you can use Hodge. You can use Hodge for the adds, you know, because that's going to be more damage. You wouldn't be using Diamond Flask on the adds. And then you can set your trinket timer like I do using my trinket add-on to switch when you're out of combat to diamond flask so then you can use you can get value out of using hodge on the ads and then diamond flask when nefarian lands so that's real cool now we're kind of you know this set is you just kind of kill the ads I remember back in the day when we did this like when I was like 13 this was like a lot more crazy looking just because we weren't <laughs> Everyone wasn't so juiced to the gills on world buffs and just meta play to where we kill the ads before they even come out. It's just a race between the DPS warriors to see who can do the most damage on the ads. Um, I remember they used to, I was a rep paladin back in the day and all these ads just used to come out and it just used to be a shit show out there. Everyone running around, you know, strategy would just would go through the window as soon as, you know, there were 20 of these guys running around. Um, one thing to consider too is you do damage on these ads is that there's a lot of cleave rather than heroic stripe oppor opportunities. So every time you've seen my bar turn green, that's because there's two ads up. I want to use cleave and not heroic strike, um, which is nice. But, you know, there's not much to say here. You kind of just kill the ads. There's not a lot going on. I wish they had like a mythic difficulty to where there were just so many ads that you actually had to do some like crowd control or, or really have to do a lot of damage. But the static, you know, that's not classic though. You also want to make sure you have good music on. I've got like some techno step going on during this fight. You cannot do optimal DPS unless you have good music on. That is the key. Also, blood, uh, my battle shot macro or weak aura is so important too because it maximizes your uptime on that because there's no way the average player is going to know that oh battle shot went down so if you have a macro that flashes at you when it goes off and you just know it's ingrained in your muscle memory to put it back up immediately that allows you to do that without even thinking so you don't need to be worrying about oh there's two minutes left all right so you'll see my trinket just got switched and i'm going to open my inventory the breath just went out and now that i dropped combat for a second i was able to put my cloak on so i got a successful trinket switch and a successful cloak switch i charge in and now it's time to start dpsing on the far end so one of the things you want to do when you go in over and the dps race starts on the far end is you want to check threat because you need to establish your baseline as, as you start attacking because your tank's either really far on threat and you've got lots of, like you'll see from my threat meter here, I've got room to work. I can really do as much damage as I want. 
but that might not be true for your guild so make sure you know because the last thing you want at the end of a bwl instance is a nefarian s s swerving all around shadow flaming people it's not going to be good here keep your berserker rage um very close on a key you can use because he's going to fear and you need to hit it immediately if you didn't even get good enough and you realize when he's going to fear you can use it you can pre-pop it but that may be less realistic for you um normal rotation as always we're going to diamond flask i don't you normally switching to diamond flask is actually a new thing to me and a new guild so i didn't really know what the optimal time is i think probably anything between 40 and 30 percent that's probably when there's a minute left in the fight but um we get lucky we don't get a lot of calls that um we don't get a lot of paladin calls in this guild i've noticed i think we had more paladins in my old guild so that whole you know 40 seconds to where you're doing no damage to the boss because he's bopped is, is no longer a thing which is super nice um see so yeah, i put battle shot on immediately again i diamond flask at 45 percent Zerker Rage out of that immediately, back into the cooldown, Bloodthirst, Whirlwind, going to Q into a Heroic Strike, her Heroic Strike, another Heroic Strike, and Bloodthirst. You can see, you can put that Heroic Strike on there right at the end, um, and you'll still get it off. So right now we're thinking about, we want to use Deathwish, but we also want to be able to sapper all of these um, skeletons that run out. So you probably want a Deathwish right around now. Um, and you're going to want to get full value out of that XQ phase. There's actually surprisingly still a good amount of health left at 20 at 28%. So you want to be careful, not pop things too early. Um, you will see, I have 20 seconds left of diamond flask and we're not even to XQ's phase yet. But, um, so we charge back in after we get feared. You really just want to get a ton of uptime on the boss. He's got a good amount of attack range. Um, so I think I'm going to death wish. I should have death wished before. Now we're in phase three, a death wish now, we're in execute phase. You'll see me rip and execute, then I immediately mighty rage pot. You want a mighty rage pot early. Um, and you're gonna see, I think I die here. Uh, yeah, so I sap her and they just all kill me. And so what you wanna do when, if you're going to use a sapper right there, and this is, you know, learn from Hestus mistakes here. If you're going to use a sapper right there, you need to wait unless you are assigned a bot before like our mages in the skill are you need to wait until the mages do their their sapper and um all of the ads have been sappered in some type of capacity or the aoe started you don't need to do um you don't need to sapper immediately because as long as you get your sapper off onto all the ads that's really all the damage you're going to be doing to the ads so if they're at 100 percent or 30 percent it doesn't matter so as long as you get it off, it's better to sapper around at a percent, you know that they've already taken damage from other sources, so they won't immediately aggro onto you. Or if they do aggro onto you, they're very close to dying um, so that you don't do what I just did. Looking back, those ads had not been attacked by anything yet. And I ripped a sapper into like 40 of them. Of course I died, but who cares? Because love this guild. We don't have to go to MC. They have so many alts that want to go mains don't have to go so all you gotta do is bwl which is so nice because i love mc guys i love doing it but it's getting old <laughs> it's getting a little old at this point um so yeah i i ever i probably will go into mc on them with them and like earth our raid two group or something on a random day and just crank some parses um with the bwl and aq gear probably gonna do that for sure but, you know, that's a whole um, BWL run, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we have we ended up dead, but we kept buffs, we kept buffs through 99.9% .9 of it. Had some close calls on Broodlord. I think the most important thing you can do as a DPS warrior in BWL is just stay calm, stay composed, know what your rotation is, know when to use your cooldowns, use them when you need to. And if you do all those things, you will top the meters so everyone thanks for watching again if you if you haven't already please drop a subscribe and a like below comment below are there any fights you'd like to see within bwl still any any guides you want to see for aq any content that i haven't been delivering that i should deliver asap let me know thanks everyone for watching and the support so far i'm looking very forward to aq coming very soon and making guides for each fight in there while they're still very relevant boss fight all of you Wishing you the best of luck in these trying times, and I'll see you soon. Peace.